Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel. This is Kadira Muhammad of Kadira.com, your marketing automation engineer, teaching you all things about marketing automation, systems and processes, and being able to outsource your way to freedom. In this video, this is actually very, very exciting. I'm so happy that you guys are watching this video. And go ahead and give this a like, a comment, and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. In this video, I'm actually gonna show you my totally automated client onboarding process for my marketing agency that's called Omnipotent Marketing. So I'm actually gonna jump into my computer. I'm gonna show you the step-by-step -step process of my like 15 step long Zapier uh, funnel that actually helps a client go from just somebody who submits their onboarding form to having a ton of their processes already set up. I'm also gonna show you my Trello account that's gonna be some of my project management tools and also my Slack account as well. So you can see some of the automated messages that go out to me and my team. So thank you so much for watching. Let's go into the video. Hey everybody, all right, we're back. So now what you're looking at is a screen recording of my actual desktop. And so what we're gonna be doing is gonna be going through the my Zebra funnel. You get an idea of what that looks like. We'll peek into my own personal, uh, my company's CRM. And I'm actually gonna show you how this all happens, like automatically, seamlessly, how it works in Trello and in Slack um, and all of that. So you can kind of see what an automated uh, onboarding setup with Zapier actually looks like. Now, here's the thing. I wanna say this before we get started. Please understand that I am a nerd, okay? So this is what I do every single day. I love stuff like this. It makes sense for me. This is what I do, okay? Um, your own onboarding setup does not need to necessarily look like this. Right. It just depends on what software you have, what's your process, how a client gets started with you. Uh, you know, this is obviously primarily for B2B companies that are especially consulting or coaching uh, type of companies that utilize like so many tools uh, like me, especially if you're online based. Right. This is mainly for like online based. It doesn't mean it can't be useful to you if you're consulting. But I just want to give you an idea of what this looks like when somebody actually has a totally automated onboarding setup. Okay, so again, I'm a nerd. You're probably not a nerd. This is what I do, you know, and I do this every day. So I just want to give you that little disclaimer because I don't want you to feel overwhelmed if you see all these steps and you're like, oh, I need that. What you need is depending on your own personal and business needs. If you want me to help you in kind of figuring that out, you can obviously book a call with me at kadir.com slash consulting and we can kind of figure that out for you. All right, so let's go into this right here. So I'm going to move my beautiful, beautiful face. And what you're looking at is the onboarding setup for uh, a type of program that we had. It's called a lead generation program um, in my marketing agency. In this marketing agency, I actually primarily work in the senior care industry. This is where I kind of senior care, senior healthcare clientele. Okay, and so we have this set up for when somebody is signing up with us and they want us to help them get leads. So I'm just giving you a little bit of context. So I'll go, you know, A to, to Z on each step and then I'm actually going to perform the onboarding uh, setup right in front of you so that way you can see all the steps work at the same time and how that all kind of works together if you've never seen it before. So if we see up here, it starts off with somebody filling out and maybe I can uh, cut this in a little bit. So it starts off with people actually filling out their client onboarding survey. Okay, so they have to fill this out um, first for this whole thing to get set up. The next thing that happens is I actually have a CRM that I include for all of my clientele. Um, it's included in their management fees. I build it out. It's a part, also part of my services. It's just a regular marketing automation engineer. And so that CRM actually gets built out. Wow, that was a messy circle. <laughs> and that CRM actually gets built out for them. And it, they get it all set up. It includes a bunch of automation steps, a bunch of workflows, other nerdy stuff. All right. So then we have that. The next thing that happens is the client gets their own client folder. Right. So every client gets their own client folder. We eventually will email that to them. And they will be able to just, you know, put whole stuff documentation and anything else in there. The next thing we just make the sharing preferences again a wacky circle right there <laughs> we make the uh, share preferences on the client folder public just so our client can be able to see it without them having to be added to the account move down a little bit the next thing we have is um we have a client business info sheet so uh you know what happens with that it's just a sheet that has all of our clientele's information their contact information it's useful for every single account manager that needs to quickly be able to talk to a client you know call them on the phone this is where that sheet's going to be at it's also in our crm but sometimes it's just easier to have them on the sheet i just like to be able to look at that data 
The next thing we have is because we're in the lead generation business for these clients, we actually have a lead generation tracker sheet. So we'll track all the leads that come in. Every time a client gets a phone call or an, or an email or a form fill out um, that also works through the CRM that we built for them, that, client, that leads information goes to our client's own specific lead tracker sheet. Okay, I'm not gonna show that because um, it's not relevant for right now, but that's really just what happens, okay? We just duplicate the sheet and then we move that sheet into the client's folder automatically. Um, so that way, once they got the sheet, everything is just in one place. And I'm gonna move my face down a little bit more, or then scroll down a little bit more. The next thing that happens is that we actually create a new channel for the client in our Slack account. Okay, so we have a, a channel in Slack. We can automatically create it for our client and we just use it that way. We can talk about very specific topics to that client. Sometimes we add the client to the Slack account if they're, if they're already familiar with Slack so that way they can speak to us a little bit quicker um, than just like email or calls or yeah, email calls really is the only way they can talk to us. Um, the next thing I do is I have a marketing assistant that I have. Her name is Cecilia. She is awesome. And she gets added to the uh, channel so that way she's already in there. And this right here is actually for Trello. And what we'll do is we create what's, what's called a new list in our fulfillment um, board. So I'm actually going to go here to give you an idea of what that looks like. This is our fulfillment channel. You'll see all this is going to be blocked off. However, um, when a new client comes on, so these are some of our more recent clients. Uh, when a new client comes on, they'll actually get a card that gets duplicated and it's a duplication of our um, fulfillment over here. So they get a new list that gets created, Process, like which actually here. looks like this. And then what happens is a bunch is of stuff is going to find these are the onboarding steps for us to, for my team to actually go ahead and get started with the rest of the onboarding of this clientele. Because I don't do all that, my team handles all that, and they just put everything together, they follow this list, and they let me know if... Um, if the client is, you know needs any help and that's when they reach out to me other than that they can just follow this template and there's already an on brain sop that they already have access to that also shows them more in detail on how to actually onboard the client um once they filled out all of their information and once we know what we need to do for them and then the last thing over here um we'll create again the onboarding process card so basically what that means is this checklist gets uh, automatically duplicated in the client's little onboarding card. That'll be like one of these. Okay. So that's kind of what happens. Now, I just said that all out loud, but what I'm going to do, I'm actually going to trigger this Zapier uh, setup right here. And I'm going to exit out of here because I don't want to mess it up. I'm going to make sure it stays on. Okay, cool. And so what happens is people fill out this survey. They give me all their information, their documentation, what they need, so on and so forth. I actually already have this pre-filled out. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to submit this. Uh, what question did I answer? Oh. Um, okay. So now we've submitted the survey. What's going to happen is everything that I just showed you in the Zapier stuff is now happening in the back end. And go here. So you see the list just got, you just saw all that happen like in real time, okay? You just saw all that happen. That's the thing from Slack. I also probably just got an email as well, but let's go through it so you can kind of see what just happened step by step. So I'm actually gonna go into Slack first. And as you can see, this new client information just happened. So this is all, this is the Slack message that my team gets because it's very detailed and it shows them exactly what needs to happen, when needs to happen, the information of the person. So what happens in Slack is this is the message that goes out. So they see that they have the onboarding deadline is seven days from today. We have a new lead gen program client to onboard. Their name is me because I just put my test information. That's my email, the company, the location of them. This is their actual CRM that just got created. Again, I have a CRM that I can duplicate sub accounts and make new accounts for my clients very easily. So then all that just got created. So we just made that, right? I can click this and because I'm logged in, I can actually see this client's new CRM that just got created. Um, it's gonna pull up right here. So it just got created. It, there's nothing in there quite yet, except for maybe some of the automation steps that are already in here. 
as you can see, I got a bunch of workflows, everything is duplicated. So this is what I have the power to do for my clients because I build out this CRM for them. But let's move on, let's keep going going. We also have the client's Trello card and the client's folder as well. And if I click the folder, this is the Google Drive folder I mentioned before. So we have the lead tracker sheet is in there as well, okay? And then we have some more instructions. So it says these items need to be added into the client's folder. So this is just me telling my staff, this is what they need to add, this is what needs to go in there. Um, the brand assets, if we have their logos or their marketing material, they could upload that in the survey. If we have their onboarding survey results, which is the survey I just filled out, we gotta upload that into the uh, folder as well. And they're signed um, SLA, that stands for service level agreement. We put all that in the client's folder before we send it out to the client. Then the client also has been added to our client business, business info sheet, which I mentioned before, and that's linked here too. And it says, please follow onboarding SOP to finish these steps setting up this client's account. Thank you. And again, this is kind of the project management bot. It just kind of repeats the information a little bit as well. Now let's go take a look at Trello. So you can see, because you saw before your eyes, how that list was created and the card and the checklist was also created as well. This is my really, really huge Trello sheet because all of my, um, my assistants and my staff will work from the Trello card. So the information kind of has to be there. So we have, uh, you know, for this program, I have my clients choose what cities in their areas they want us to get leads for. They, they have the option of a few. And so we confirm that over here. This is the actual CRM. Again, business name, the client's name, the email, the phone number. You don't call me. No, I'm playing. Uh, the location of the person, uh, the time zone they're in, their website, the number to send leads to, the email to send leads to, um, the emails to send, you know, employee uh, referrals and whatnot, insurances, because my, you know, we're in healthcare, the client takes insurance, their hourly rate. Just basically all of the answers they gave from their survey also automatically went into their travel card because we can do that in Xavier. That's the power of Xavier. You see, I just did all that. I gave them all that information. I got everything I needed from the client. And now my team has the uh, tools they need to be able to fill out the checklist and go through the rest of the steps because it's already created because they know exactly what they have to do and they just check out, check off each one. And once they're done, they're done, right? So that is the power of having an automated onboarding system. Again, I'm a nerd, this is what I do. So of course mine is a little bit longer than most people's and that's okay. The point of this isn't to overwhelm you, but it is to just show you the power of being able to combine your tools together. Now I will tell you this, um, my CRM does not natively integrate with Trello or Slack because you might be wondering why am I using Xavier to do all this. My CRM does not natively integrate into Trello or Slack. So I need Xavier to connect these two together and send data from one place to the other. That's why we use Zapier if you're wondering why we even use Zapier to begin with, okay? But as you can see, all this was created. Um, everything is in here as it needs to be. It is so seamless. And then once everything gets started, I get a message from my project manager who's like, hey, okay, great, I got the information. We're gonna get started. I'm doing ABC, whatever, whatever. You know, I booked the call with the client, the onboarding call, and uh, you know, we're ready to go. So that's it, everybody. I'm so uh, appreciative of y'all for watching this video. Look. This is the power of Zapier. I'm actually going to go into my little outro and I'll catch y'all later. All right, everybody. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you love that. Uh, again, now my stuff is can be very extensive and I, I include a lot because this is just what I do every day. Your process does not need to be the same. Right? your process does not need to be the same and if you're interested in learning other ways to utilize zapier so that way you can learn how to make these types of you know semi-complicated to also sometimes straightforward and simple zaps um, or at least learn a little bit more on how to utilize zapier in this function then i suggest that you go to kadir.com zapier and i actually have some zapier specific tutorials uh, that you can purchase and actually zaps that you can utilize yourself that i share with you and i build them out for you all you gotta do is plug in your own information and you're good to go i actually have videos on how to do that i have small short courses on how to actually do that just go to kadir.com zapier to learn more which the link should be somewhere over there and you'll be able to be your own zapier master and learn how to use zapier as like the glue of the internet by the way if you watch this whole video and you're like kadira i want that automated system but i don't want to build it myself i don't want to learn how to use zapier or any of that i want to hire you and your team to do it for me 
we are actually very able and capable of doing that for you. So please go ahead and book a consultation with myself and or somebody on my team if you go to kadir.com slash consulting and we will help you get clarity as to how you can build that system for yourself, what software you need and how soon we can actually build that out for you. So you can book a call again at kadir.com slash consulting. Okay, so thank you all for watching. Again, this is Kadir Muhammad. Go ahead and give this a like, a comment, subscribe, and share this video to anybody else who you think is gonna need something like this for their own business. All right, everybody, see you later.